everyone, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I bought when I went to Paris. I've got items from Chanel and I've got some stuff from Sephora as well. Really conscious that I don't want this to be one of those videos where it's just like spewing things that I bought. There is actually a purpose behind all of this besides quite a few of you saying to me that you wanna know. And I even have had some of you speculating. One of you who is Purple Pearl Pig, you said that you had a gut feeling I got the iridescent chevron flap in the pearly rose gold. That sounds amazing, but I didn't get that, and there's a reason for that. It's to do with currency, and I'm gonna come on to that in a second. Let's start with Sephora. To be honest, I just got a hell load of these. How many did I get? If you are lucky enough to be near a Sephora and you have never tried these, can I please recommend? They are little individual sleeping masks. I can get about two wears out of one, and the one that I like the best is the pearl, is it the pearl one? Yeah, perfecting and brightening. This one I find to be the best. These are on par, not as good, but they're on par with the Peter Thomas Roth stem cell rose mask, whereby they plump, they seriously hydrate. I put them on normally at around about nine o'clock at night and then I go about my business and then I go to bed and I leave them on and they're very good. So the pearl is really good. This one that I hadn't tried before is anti-fatigue and energizing. This is pomegranate. This is another good one actually. The purple one's really good as well. Orchid sleeping mask for anti-aging and smoothing and moisturizing. Right, this one, the lotus one, I use that when my skin is feeling dehydrated. I have oily skin, but sometimes it feels dry, but it's not dry, it's sort of dehydrated, and that's really good for that. If you want something that you can put on and you wake up and you feel fresh, then I really recommend these. The first day in Paris we went to Galleries Lafayette. I didn't end up buying anything in there for the mere reason that everything in there I could get in London. And because of the strength of the pound at the moment and it being so diabolical, everything was very expensive when we went there. In addition, things like food, eating out, was incredibly expensive, even when you compare it with London. But because of the Euro being a bit stronger, everything was just quite pricey. And for things that you could get in London, it made it not really worth getting. But the one exception was when I went to Chanel, on Rue Cambon. That is the only store in the world where you get the white packaging and the white bag. And I wanted that. I think if you're a real fanatic about this stuff, it's one of those places that you need to tick off your list. Being straight up with you, the boutique did not look any different to any other boutique. In fact, if you go to Bond Street Boutique in London, that place I think is 10 out of 10. Rue Cambon is sort of like a seven out of 10, although I think the service there was better. In London, it can sometimes be a little bit unfriendly. Whereas when I went to Rue Cambon, everyone was very friendly, very attentive. They even let us take photos in there. There were people doing a bit of filming. Whereas in London, if you so much as get your camera out, there's like a security guard behind you. I didn't end up getting any of the bags because of the issue that I've mentioned it ends up being so much money. It, particularly if you're traveling from the UK, if you're traveling from elsewhere where your own currency is pretty high and you can get a good conversion rate, then it's probably gonna be worth your while. Although I've got to say at the moment, because of the cost of the pound, anyone looking to travel anywhere and potentially buy anything, you need to come to London because you'll make some massive savings. This is the first item I have owned that is caviar and in the boy and it is this little wallet this is actually bigger it would be helpful if i had it here this is bigger than a card holder a little bit bigger it, i mean it is a card holder i'm going to show you approximately how many cards you can fit into this and it's what i'm going to show you is not a pretty sight this is what i use as a wallet look how many cards are in this i use this to death and in fact i got this last year this is this Saleron little card holder. It's beautiful, it's really nice, but I've slightly ruined it because I end up putting so much in it. All of these cards fit into here without destroying the shape of it, but it's not hugely big. And this was a key thing because I use a lot of mini and small size bags. And so I like all of the component parts that I carry around with me, whether it's hand cream or my makeup or my wallet, I like everything to be mini or as small as possible so that I can fit it in. I'm gonna put the price that I paid for everything below. And if I can find it, I'm gonna put the price in pound sterling as well. One of the things that I thought was really nice about the service when I went into this store in particular was the girl that served us, 
She was so sweet. She actually went so far as to ask where we traveled from. And she, she even gave us her own advice on places that she would recommend definitely visiting in Paris. And I thought that was a really nice touch because I think normally it's sort of a bit like, what do you want to buy? Yeah, there you go, okay, bye. And it was like a really nice experience. But also because she knew that everyone's there for the white packaging, she ended up giving me additional little mini ones that she put in my bag. And I thought that was really nice of her. The next item that I bought, I didn't end up buying in Paris because they didn't have my size. But also I think that I was quite glad I didn't buy it there and then because it gave me two weeks to really think about whether I actually wanted this item. And after two weeks of still thinking about it, I ended up getting it in London in my size. From what I understand, this is an item that's selling out quite quickly. And in fact, the colorway that I wanted this in, they didn't have anymore because I think it's from like the autumn winter 17 collection or something. Anyway. Because it's from London, it came in the usual black packaging. Another reason why I'm glad I got it in London is cheaper. It was way cheaper getting it in London. This is my first ever experience of a Chanel belt. But look at this. Do you remember in the vlog, in part one, when I was at Heathrow and there was that 13,000 pound black jacket? Do you remember that? And there was a belt around it that had double C's on it. Well, that belt you could buy separately. And when I went into the store in Paris, I saw it in the black and it had sort of like three stripes around it and then white stitching across. I saw that really liked it, it wasn't my size. It also came in this uh, tortoise shell and it came in white. The white was a bit too much for me. It had like a black strap, but it was like a white double C on the front. Personally, I got this because I want to wear it in the winter at waist height over the top of thick knit jumpers even over the top of jackets, maybe from Zara, things in that sort of buccal material that look like they could be Chanel, but they're not. And then you put that over the top and it really makes the whole thing work out. When I was in Paris, I saw this version that's got Gabrielle written on it. And I gotta be honest, I didn't like it. And even looking at it now, I don't like that detail, but weirdly when you wear it, particularly if you wear it with say fabric that, that drapes slightly over that, you don't really notice it so much. It actually ends up just looking quite nice. If you can get it in the black, the black one is more expensive. It was over a thousand pounds as I remember. This was about 950, although I didn't pay that because I bought it in Harrods and I had quite a big credit at the time. So I ended up getting it for around about 450 pounds. Still a lot for a belt, but better than a thousand. And I'm actually gonna do some videos, including this, wearing sort of high street clothes with this and other bits and pieces incorporated. Now for the final thing, she actually gave me a load of free stuff as well, which I'll show you in a sec. See, look at this. This is a spare bag that she gave me from the Rue Cambon boutique. And she's put the little belt. How nice is that? I'm not sure they do that for you in London. I thought that was a really nice additional touch. I didn't even ask her. She was just like, oh, I've put one extra for you. I'll tell you what, if you would like to win this and maybe put bits and pieces in it or have it in your room or anything like that, leave a comment below and I will pick at random someone and I will post you this because it's very sweet. And if you are big into the brand or you're a collector or anything like that, I think it's a really nice item to have. So let me know if that would be of interest. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, you're gonna give away a boutique bag. Yes, but if you get it, you'll get it. I'm actually most excited about seeing these because I haven't seen them since I bought them and I can't wait to wear them. It is a pair of shoes or to be exact, it's a pair of boots. These are the boots in question and they're so nice. They've got tiny bits of sparkle in them. It's got a little silver plaque on the back of it that's got Chanel. A couple of things that I liked, if you want a pair of boots that aren't too high, the heel on this is, I think it's just under 100 millimeters. They certainly, when I tried them on, they don't feel too high. I have since seen these in London and I'm sure these are part of the new collection. So I'm sure that you can get them if you're after them. They also came in full leather. As I remember, the full leather version was more expensive than these, but I actually liked the fact that these were fabric and I liked the sparkly detail because in winter when it's cold and you want to go out let's say to dinner or something and it's sort of like a casual dinner thing in the evening i always wear trousers or jeans and so to have something like this that just jazzes up the whole outfit i liked the look of them one of the things that i was particularly wanting to see in paris and expecting to see but i didn't see it was little independent boutique shops maybe selling brands and clothing that you don't tend to get in the big 
chains. I didn't really see any of those and I don't know why I imagined that there would be those there. If any of you have ever been and you know of any boutique shoe shops or clothing shops, it would be great if you could share them because I'd like to think I'd go back one day. If you are traveling from the UK, personally, unless you're like a massive fan of Chanel and you want to get the bag, then I think maybe don't buy over there. The store were also really good about letting you take pictures on Gabrielle Chanel's staircase. So when I walked in, I was expecting to see it. I don't know why I imagined that it would be a main part of the shop because I've only ever seen it on photos. But when you walk in, it's sort of like a side door off to the right. The lady who was serving us explained the history of it. She explained that Gabrielle Chanel didn't actually live there. She used to go there in the day and she had an apartment elsewhere. The collections, as they used to walk down the stairs and show them off to the press, the way the mirror works across the right hand side of the wall there, she was able to see the reactions of people in the mirror without them being able to see her. So there was sort of like a really beautiful history around it. And certainly if you're a fan of the brand and if you're into brands like this, then it's definitely one thing to do is to go and have the obligatory photo taken on the stairs. Before I go, I'm gonna try and do this more often, okay? But before I go, I'm going to show you what I'm wearing and where it's all from. The shirt, was unbelievably unexpensive. I'm going to put details of all of this below, but this is from a website called Rose Gal. If you've ever had the equipment shirts that feel a bit silicony, silky, it's, it's just the most comfortable thing. It's got little button sleeves on it and you can tuck it in. This belt I got from Luisa Viaroma. The jeans, oh my God, the jeans are super old. These are from J Brand. Shoes here are the Gucci Marmont in the high heel. Now I must confess, I'm actually thinking of selling these because although they are beautiful, I find them personally a little bit too high to walk in. The watch that I'm wearing with this is from Jord. This, I think I wore this in the last video as well. This is the one that is in black, I think it's called Ebony and it's with um, gold details on the face. And then on the other arm, I'm wearing the pearl bracelet, which is from Elle Florence, who is also on YouTube and I highly recommend her stuff. This is a beautiful bracelet and it actually converts into a necklace as well. The next bracelet next to it, the Parve one is from Swarovski. And then the gold bracelet, this is, um, this is like a, a bracelet that I actually have had for a while. Um, it's like 18 karat gold thing, so you can't sort of get it on the high street. And then the bag that I'm using at the moment is this, which you can either have this side, which has got hydrangeas on it, or you can have it the other side and just have it pink. You can also take this strap off it. I think out of, out of all the bags I've got, I definitely get the most compliments on this one. I think this is also from the spring summer collection, so you might struggle to get this, but they this is um this is like a classic style they always do and they just do it in different colours, so you can definitely get it. Some of the winter ones are really nice actually. I really want to say I just appreciate all of you watching. Honestly, more than you can imagine. I juggle this channel in between doing a job like many other YouTubers, and it can be really grueling at times trying to get videos done in between life in general. So the fact that you all watch and you enjoy it means the absolute earth to me. So thank you all so much. I'm actually gonna link to those two vlogs here. I'm gonna put part one here and then part two just here. So if you have seen one, but maybe not the other, then you can go and have a click and see what's going on. Hope you've enjoyed this. Any questions about Paris in general, about the cost of things over there, then let me know in the comments. Thank you all once again, and I will see you in the next video.